Black Shot. Let's start the show. My name is Sam Marshall Law. Welcome back to the show where we do what? Stay true to ourselves and never, ever, 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 ever conform. Welcome to the Sam Marshall Law Show. I am your gracious host. We got a good one for you today. It's episode 161. We're going to deal with law 31 in my book, I Still Love Her, and that law is find a muse. One of my favorite topics because I have a lot of muses that I'm going to tell y'all about later on in the show. Hopefully y'all write to me and let me know about some of your muses so maybe I can get some inspiration from the people you get inspiration from and you can get some inspiration from the people I get inspiration from and we all just keep being inspired. So thank you for the joining of your ears to the Sam Marshall Law Show. I appreciate this. You could have been anywhere else in the world tonight, but you're right here with me. I appreciate y'all. So I'm about to give you all the love and positive energy in my body, and hopefully you can feel some just some of it, and it can carry you throughout this day, because I appreciate y'all showing up, so I'm going to give you all this positive energy. Thank you. My name is Sam Marshall Law. Yo, so as usual, we start the show saying thank you. Um, saying our prayers and meditations and affirmations for you, me, the universe, earth, everybody. So let's start like this to set the tone right for the show and for the day. Universal God, Most High, Ja! Cosmic Intelligence, Great Architect, God. Thank you for allowing us to wake up today full of inner peace. God, thank you for giving us the strength to get through adversities. God, thank you for family. God, thank you for genuine friends. God, thank you for our good and improving health. God, thank you for a place to call our own home. God, thank you for nourishment and enjoyment with the food that we eat. God, thank you for clean water. God, thank you for education, opportunities to learn and grow. God, thank you for freedom, the ability to make our own choices. God, thank you for nature, just us being able to see and feel the beauty that you've created and really appreciate it. God, thank you for technology. God, thank you for books. God, thank you for music. God, thank you for art. God, thank you for community and a sense of belonging and support and feeling supported. God, thank you for love. God, thank you for peace. God, thank you for safety. God, thank you for all the seasons. The variety and beauty of the changing weather. God, thank you for filling our mouths with laughter. God, thank you for the good memories that we're creating right now. God, thank you for aspirations and goals for the future. We appreciate Universal God, thank you for blessing us every day in every way. And thank you for this being a beautiful, wonderful day. Thank you, God. Thank you. Now let's start the show. My name is Sam Marshall Law. As you know, it's going to be a good one today. Find the muse. Let's get it. Law 31. Find a muse. Life is art, and every person given life is an artist born with this gift of creation. However, in life, for various reasons, sometimes the creator may not always be their most fluent when it comes to design. And as said, ups, downs, and all types of changes are a way of life. To draw you into a more fluid place, every artist must have a muse they can look at as a source of inspiration that may guide them back to their most optimal self. This is not to say you should become a copycat, as your inner light is already bright enough for a lifetime. However, sometimes your light is being blocked. Find the muse that inspires you to use your own power of creation. Do not become envious of your muse, for envy never got anyone where they wanted to go. Instead, see your muse as a gift sent to help dust your own light off so that maybe you shine your intended brightest. Maybe it is someone who has already walked a similar path you wish to travel, or perhaps it is someone who never had the opportunities you have. Still, you have the chance that some may crave which may drive you to reach your maximum potential, knowing that others would love to be in your shoes. We all have a trigger that motivates us. Some need them less than others. However, muses are always helpful to inspire and show you, you too have the light to shine where there was once darkness. Great Ones, verse one. 
The first story begins February 6, 1945, in a small Jamaican village called Nine Miles. In the parish of St. Anne was born a great man called a poet, a prophet, a revolutionary artist. To get where he was going, he had to work the hardest. You know where his heart is, never moving with fear, left home at 14 to pursue a music career. Wherever there was a mic, he would come rock, cut his first record at 16 and called it Judge Not. 63 came, he joined a group called the Teenagers, then later on they changed their name to the Whalers. Respected by men, and women thought he was so fly, came out with songs like Jammin' and No Woman No Cry. Took Yard by Storm, making some deep tracks, produced by Danny Sims and Lee Scratch. Perry, then in 72 we signed to a major, the album Catch a Fire released outside of Jamaica. International distribution got him worldwide acclaim. Now everyone knows Bob Marley is his name. Mystical visionary, when would he next appear? Every time he spoke, he had the nation's collective ear. Perceived as a threat because his political power. Then on December 3rd, 1976, gunman came to his home, aiming but not a camera, shot Bob, his wife, and his manager. Luckily no one died, they tried to harm the king. Soon he was back rocking on stage, arm and sling. Defiantly appearing after a failed murder attempt. Now it's the 80s, New York, some time before dark. Bob collapsed while jogging in Central Park. How did he die? We may never know the answer. On May 11th, 81, they said it was from cancer. 1. I grew up listening to reggae music, and Bob Marley was always featured. As a kid, you learn things from what you hear and see, and sometimes don't even realize it until you're older. Bob's music had great messages that were able to unite an entire country at one point. I can always find inspiration when looking into Bob Marley's life. He is one of my favorite muses. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on. Back then they said you gotta see this child prodigy. Yeah. Born May 13th, 1950. He started in a storm, but he got through the weather. A boy made blind after a hospital error, but never left out the mix. He learned to play the harmonica, the drums, and the piano at six. Dude lost his sight, gained a higher sense of listening. He studied classical piano in Michigan. Very bored, he got a whiff and loved his whole sound. And when he was 10, he signed a record deal at Motown. Where he was meant to go, everybody knew for dropped the album at 12. To some, his songs are like the word of the Lord He got countless Grammys and a Lifetime Achievement Award yeah. Now we're mentioning the greats, you gotta call his name Or you're the shame, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame For songwriters and for rock and roll So if you never knew, you got a lot to know This is an actual fact, don't gotta believe me It's just a wonderful story about a boy named Stevie if there's a door in your way, know that you can break through the to be yourself and stay true Take what you have and make do Seven 
seen from the year 63 will forever be a date that goes down in history. He slipped through when nobody was looking. A baby born in New York, specifically Brooklyn. A basketball player who had come for his dream, but as a sophomore in high school got cut from the team. Practice nonstop at the door is where he left fear. Average 25 points a game by the next year. As a senior, his competition he was burying and got selected to be a McDonald's All-American. This university saw he was getting nice and gave him a scholarship to play ball in North Carolina. The kid was hot in 82, helped the Tar Heels win the championship, and he hit the winning shot in the NCAA, taking up the year in 83 and 84, the college player of the year. Then he headed to the NBA where every star go, and he was drafted by the Bulls out of Chicago. 15 seasons, scored 30 points a game, and won pretty much every award you could name. Six championships, 11 MVPs came, one more to gain on his way to the Hall of Fame. This is how you find the calling. Larry Bird once said he was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Now this is about what you can do with your mind, so I dedicate this to the greatest of all time. I see my goal and I'ma go for it. producer to do it this is from the sign martial law and mr joker album hip hop and the soul 2 highly slept upon i love this album one of my most creative albums you should definitely check it out what do you call that a careless self-promotion that didn't seem careless to me i was very careful in where i placed it <laughs> welcome back to the sign martial law show thank you for coming back i, I appreciate it so we're talking about Law 31 in my book, which is Find a Muse. I love this topic because it's easy to talk about because I have a lot of muses. Today, I feel like having muses is not as popular as it either once was or should be. Let me explain. I feel like a lot of people are copying each other and no one I don't want to say no one but a lot of people because there are so many copycats of each other it's sometimes it's hard to say who's the original and I feel like people copy each other out of um, out of fear you know because I, I tend to fear I tend to feel that every action is out of love or fear so when you're consistently copying something that's not who you are I, I think that's out of fear of not um, people not accepting you for who you are but copying someone is very very different from finding a muse and I think people get the two mixed up because I feel like we should have muses more and I feel like people do not have them and to me, a muse is a force or a, a thing, most likely a person that you draw creative inspiration from. And I feel like nowadays, a lot of people, they hesitate to give credit to where the originator is from. And I suppose that's because they want the credit. But when you are being the best of yourself, there's nobody like you. So you don't ever have to fear anyone being really like you because there is nobody really like you. So when I find a muse and I find them all the time, I'm very vocal about them. Um, but some of my muses are very local to me. They're my, my own children or my own family. Um, mostly for me my children are my muses is where I find a lot of my creative energy from um, from just having conversations with them I learn a lot not because they are 
smarter than me, but because they think differently than me. They think in a untampered with way. So when I want to find a source of rawness of of untampered with energy just just truthful energy a lot of times i have conversations with my children and they give me the brightest most colorful answers so my children are 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 one of my main muses but then additionally i have muses for different types of um, creations like my mom is another one of my muses and, and she's a muse because i look at what she was able to accomplish in her life and where she came from and every time i look towards her it gives me a boost of creative energy because i'm able to see what she was able to get through and where she's at and this enables me to create in a way where it's like how could i not have something to talk about because I've, I can look at her and see everything she's went through so I can draw inspiration from that alone. And it's always about drawing inspiration from somewhere. Like, where do you get this gusto to create? And when I look at someone who's been through a lot, especially when someone is, is close to me, it drives me to create things. It drives me to make things. When I've seen someone make something out of themselves, It drives me to make something out of myself, if that makes sense to you. I have muses like Bob Marley. And that's just one. You know, there's a lot of musical muses, but I'm actually looking at a picture of Bob Marley right now. He's looking right at me. And um, the quote on the wall in front of me is, The greatest, the greatness of a man is not how much wealth he acquires, it's his integrity and ability to affect those around him positively. Hmm. He must have known he was amused with that quote. Because when I see how Bob is able to affect so many people globally, it inspires me to do the same through anything that I put out, whether it's this podcast or whether it's through my music or whether it's through one of my books when I'm able to see the effect he had on people years after he he passed away Bob passed away in 1981 and to this day I see people like swooning over Bob and it's because he was a muse for the people he was a muse for, for me so it's always about when sometimes people are like do you have writer's block i never have a writer's block because i always just look to one of my muses and a muse could be someone just doing what you're doing someone walking the same path as you and it's not to say that you're copying anything they're doing but it is okay to draw inspiration from someone it is okay to be inspired or be influenced even by someone a lot of times people nowadays they don't want to save it's like they they want to get the influence they want to be inspired by something but they don't want to give the credit for it and it's like that is backwards your muses is to be your muses are to be celebrated not hidden you don't draw inspiration or influence from something and then hide it like because you're not you only hide it when you're trying to act like you originated it like don't do that don't draw influence or inspiration from something or someone and then try to act like you didn't morally that is in the basement so it's okay to have muses you're supposed to have muses but celebrate them collaborate with them bring them up with you don't try to hide them find your muses and they will lift you up higher and you will lift them up higher 
a muse could be a loving situation you're looking at. It could be someone else's relationship. You could find creative inspiration within that. But a lot of times we just look towards the same things over and over over again and we don't get inspired because we're looking at the same situations we're looking at the same environment and what i'm saying to you is intentionally go out and find something that is in the lane that you're looking to be in and find someone who's done it exceptionally well that you can draw inspiration from look at their story look at where they've came from look at what they had to get through like use your tools and there are so many muses if you look around it could be in your own house it could be your own children it could be your own mom it could be someone great like a bruce lee but you would be making a mistake if you don't use the people around you that have the ability to show you something that you can't see on your own and that's the the thing sometimes we just always try to see things on our own but we we're connected to everything so we have millions and billions of eyes if we allow ourselves to be open to other forms of inspiration and and give those forms of inspiration credit and when we do that we get even more inspired Find your muse. Find your muse. Who's your muse? Tell me about some of your favorite muses. I told you about some of mine. Hey. Who are some of yours? My name is Sam Marshall Law. This is the Sam Marshall Law Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, y'all. Sam Marshall Law, Shiggity Show. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe and share it with your people. You know how we get down. So we at the part of the show, we'll be doing the book of the week and the movie of the week and the quote of the week. And this week, we are going to connect them to the show's topic, which is find a muse. So we'll start with we'll start with the book first, and then we'll go into the movie, and then we'll talk about how they kind of connect. So the book is called. So for the topic that's parallel to find a muse, this book is called "Still Like an Artist" by Austin Kleon. In his eye-opening manifesto, "Still Like an Artist: Ten Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative." Austin Kleon pulls back the curtain on the myth of originality. This isn't just a book. 
It's a creativity boot camp that encourages you to take inspiration from the world around you and remix it into something uniquely yours. Cleon's wisdom is sprinkled with witty insights that hit harder than a double espresso. He tells us that every idea is a mashup of previous influences, so why not just embrace it? The book is really a treasure trove of practical advice from, you know what, you should just read it. It's peppered with visuals that make the journey as entertaining as it is enlightening. His guidance is like having a mentor who's got your back, pushing you to explore your creative potential fearlessly. So definitely check that out. Again, it's called Still Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. So for the for the movie, love, 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 love this movie. Love this movie. It is, let's get, get into it. It dropped in 89. So I, I came back and watched it later on in life a few times when I was a teenager. Dead Poet Society. Dead Poet Society, this film that makes you want to stand on a desk and shout, Carpe Diem. Directed by a brother named, well, directed by a guy named Peter Weir and starring the legendary Robin Williams. It dropped in 89. It's a classic set in the rigid confines of the Welton Academy in 1959. Williams plays John Keating, an unorthodox English teacher who rips the textbook rule book to shreds and encourages his students to seize the day. Keating's charisma and passion ignite a fire in his students, inspiring them to break free from societal expectations and discover their own voices. The film is a masterclass in storytelling. One of my favorites weaving humor, drama, poetry into the narrative that resonates with anyone who's ever had a dream on everything. Um, Keating's lessons go beyond the classroom, challenging us to think for ourselves and live life passionately. I, you gotta see this movie. I mean, Maybe it won't hit you like it hit me, but I, I, to this day, I love this movie. I, it's one of those movies that I can just put on and watch from beginning to end. And it, no matter how many times I've seen it, so definitely check it out. Dead Poets Society. Um, so both Still Like an Artist and Dead Poets Society are, are love letters to the creative spirit. They remind us that inspiration isn't a solo journey. It's a collective endeavor where we stand on the shoulders of giants. Cleon's book equips you with the tools to find and cultivate your creative muse, stressing that every artist is a product of their influences. It's a call to action to embrace and transform the ideas that surround us. On the other hand, Keating's teachings in Dead Poet Society urge us to find our muse within ourselves and the world around us. He challenges his students to see the world differently and draw inspiration from their unique perspectives. Both works underscore the importance of seeking and nurturing inspiration, whether from the pages of a book or the lessons of an impassioned teacher. They compel us to seek out what moves us and to channel that into our own creative expressions. These works don't just inform, they really in me that ignited a spark that you know fueled a lifetime of creativity whenever I go back and check out that movie specifically so I definitely suggest all the listeners of this Sai Martial Law show dive into these gems and really let them guide you into finding your own muses seize the day carpe diem <laughs> that's what I you know I first learned Carpe Diem from this movie, Dead Poet Society. If I ever got a tattoo, it might say Carpe Diem. But, so, for the quote of the day, I love this one. We're, we've reached to the end of the show. Thank you for staying with me as long as you have. If you have, you've, you've gotten to this wonderful quote. It's actually an African proverb. We're going to end the show like this. I hope y'all have a, a wonderful um, next few days. Until next time. Peace, love, and positive energy. You know how we get down. But here is the, here is the uh, proverb, the quote of the day. A cat that dreams of becoming a lion 
must lose its appetite for rats. Mm. Again, a cat that dreams of becoming a lion must lose its appetite for rats. Boom. My name is Sam Marshall Law. This is the Sam Marshall Law Show. I love y'all. Until next time, peace, love, and positive energy. And we out like that. <laughs> Equal rights and justice for all. Rise and never fall. Boom. So what they gonna do? Well, no for them not true. Then this reggae FR and get slow, y'all. Who do you think you are? Living in a small world. That you think you are, we're living in a small world. Small world. But that you think you are, we're living in a small world. Small world. So far as you think you are, we're living in a regular that they far away. That day will come when I shall stand and see all those wicked men in the fire getting burned. That day will come when they will try to escape. When they will And bang it and put it some gun That day will come When them for a association They the one of the reggae If I use them from the slum yeah. And that day I will love to see the face For all those evil lady to the human race And try to take things out of the place Run away to space Through them in a haze wow. Of your one and judgment You are going to taste When them find out say that them can't escape Sadness they say, and the people them trace Smile on my face That day will come When I say stand and see all those wicked men In the fire getting burned That day will come When they will try to escape